लास्ट जो सेशन था हमारा वो थायराइड ग्लैंड के ऊपर था उसके अंदर हमने इसकी एनाटॉमी वगैरह सब चीज डिस्कस किया था लेकिन नाउ अब हम बात करेंगे पैराथायराइड ग्लैंड के ऊपर इट्स नॉट अ वेरी बिग टॉपिक इतना बड़ा टॉपिक नहीं है और इसके अंदर बस थोड़ी बहुत चीजें हैं व्हिच स्टूडेंट्स नीड टू नो क्योंकि ये थोड़ा सा एडवांस्ड कैटेगरी के अंदर आ जाता है बट इट इज गुड टू नो अ फ्यू बेसिक थिंग्स अबाउट द पैराथायराइड ग्लैंड सो <coughs> ये चार छोटे छोटे ग्लैंड होते हैं फोर टाइनी ग्लैंड लोकेटेड इन द नेक थायराइड के अपर और लोअर पोल्स के पास होते हैं सही है नो इन व्हाट यू कैन से यूजुअली हर ग्लैंड जो है इट इज इट इज अ वेरी स्मॉल ग्लैंड एंड हार्डली इट वुड वे लाइक 30 मिलीग्राम 20 मिलीग्राम थ्री टू फोर मिलीमीटर इन डायमीटर होता है फ्लैट सा इट्स अ फ्लैट गोल्डन ब्राउन कलर थिंग स्टक टू द पोल ऑफ द थायराइड एंड एक जो है वो अपर पोल के ऊपर होता है एक नीचे लोअर पोल की तरफ होता है पोजिशन इनकी बहुत हाईली वेरिएबल होती है यू कैन यू कैन फाइंड दैम समाइम्स इवन इन द मीडिया द लोअर वन अपर वाले तो फेयरली कॉन्स्टेंट होते हैं अपर पोल के पास होते हैं लेकिन लोअर वाले जो है दे कैन यू कैन यू नो इवन फाइंड दैम इन द इन द मीडिया समटाइम्स and uh what they produce is obviously called parathyroid hormone uh, which controls the calcium okay so now this is the uh, anatomy of the thyroid and the parathyroid gland uh, if you see this is a trachea this is a thyroid gland uh, right uh, you know straddling the trachea uh right lobe left lobe the isthmus uh over here right here uh now these are the are the thyroid glands right here parathyroid gland sorry ye isi color ke hote hain they are of the same color uh usually ye aage ki taraf se aapko nahi dikhte you can't see them from uh, from the from the front they are stuck to the back of the gland which makes their access uh, pretty difficult if you are uh, operating upon them now now how how is it regulated okay now uh, parathyroid hormone is supposed to control the calcium now <clears throat> any increase in calcium is going to decrease the parathyroid hormone uh, because the parathyroid hormone by itself increases the calcium level and uh, whenever the level is increased then the calcium level actually decreases the parathyroid hormone level okay let's uh, go through this this chart here the low calcium ion level in plasma below 8.5 uh, the parathyroid gland causes the parathyroid uh, the parathyroid gland secretes parathyroid hormone in response to the low calcium levels <clears throat> now what the calcium uh, now what the parathyroid hormone does is in the bone it increases the activity of the osteoclasts now the osteoclasts are the cells that break down the bone uh, and you know release calcium out of it in the intestine it increases the absorption of calcium and in the kidney it increases the <clears throat> the conservation of of calcium and it uh, uh, reabsorbs the calcium from the kidney so that the calcium concentration in the urine is reduced now all these three measures actually increase the calcium levels in the blood stream now this is normal ho homeostasis okay this is this is normal uh, normal which is the normal way in which calcium is regulated in the body and <clears throat> likewise uh, uh, now the calcium is increased this increased calcium is going to cause the parathyroid hormones to decrease the parathyroid hormone secretion okay now this is a loop that we follow here now what is 
hypoparathyroidism which is uh, it is not something with that happens very frequently unless you take out the parathyroid glands uh, but it is nice to know uh, it is a state of decreased secretion or activity of parathyroid hormone as the name indicates of course uh, this leads to decreased blood levels of calcium and increased blood phosphorus okay see parathyroid hormone while it conserves calcium by acting on the kidney it actually increases the excretion of phosphorus by the kidney so it is phosphaturic you can say that it facilitates the excretion of phosphorus from the body now uh, if a patient is hypothyroid hypoparathyroid which most likely is due to surgical intervention like say if someone say has got a total thyroidectomy done and that patient uh, has got his all four parathyroids removed inadvertently then of course you know uh, he will have hypoparathyroidism without any doubt uh, there are a few diseases of it but you know they are so rare that uh, we haven't come across them yet now the more common and in fact pretty common thing is hyperparathyroidism now hyperparathyroidism is an increase in the parathyroid hormone levels in the blood as a result of increased secretion by the parathyroid gland okay now this happens from you know uh, there are different types of hyperparathyroidism they can be primary they can be secondary and they can be tertiary hyperparathyroidism now all these three hyperparathyroidism increase the parathyroid hormone level but their their uh, reason for doing so is different so we'll take it down one by one and then we'll discuss it okay so um, there's primary there's uh, primary hyperparathyroidism is basically if the problem lies in the parathyroid gland uh, secondary is if the actual problem does not exist within the gland but is present outside of the gland and tertiary hyperparathyroidism is actually a result of the secondary hyperparathyroidism which we'll talk about in the end okay uh, primary hyperparathyroidism is uh, presence of uh, obviously as the name indicates increased level of parathyroid hormone in the uh, in the bloodstream now what happens in primary hyperparathyroidism is that one of the four glands actually develops an adenoma or hypertrophy uh, and they start hypersecreting the parathyroid hormone and they become autonomous okay uh, like you know there there are uh, we talked about a thyroid adenoma uh, in the last lecture uh, so likewise there is a secreting parathyroid adenoma which can develop in any one of these glands and that adenoma is actually autonomous it is not regulated by uh, calcium levels or it is it is it is kind of a rogue agent which which uh, just secretes at its own will as a result hota kya hai the normal parathyroid gland kyunki char hote hain ab char mein se if one of them has this adenoma the other three glands as a result of increased pth level they become suppressed and the consequence of that is ki that when you actually remove the diseased gland the normal glands take a while in coming back into function बिकॉज उनका फंक्शन इतने अरसे से सप्रेस हुआ हुआ होता है कि वो फॉरन अपने नॉर्मल फंक्शन के ऊपर वापस नहीं आते दैट टू इज इज अ प्रॉब्लम विच यू फेस आफ्टर सर्जरी इन प्राइमरी हाइपोथरॉयडिज्म सो द डिसऑर्डर हां हां सर ये जो प्रेजेंटेशन की स्लाइड्स है ना सर ये आधी शो हो रही हो आधी शो हो रही है सर यानी या मेरे पास तो पूरी आ रही है फुल आ रही सर आधी समझ ले ब्लैक स्क्रीन आ रही है हमारे पास 
अच्छा तो मैं क्या करूं मैं मैं इसको प्रीवियस व्यू पे ले जाऊं सर यस सर ओके सर अभी दोबारा अब शोरी सर नेक्स्ट स्लाइड पे जाइएगा एक बार नेक्स्ट स्लाइड अब आ रहे यस सर और सर नेक्स्ट यस सर शो हो रहा है ओके सर प्लीज कंटिन्यू कर सकते हैं अभी आ गया सही यस सर शो हो रहा है अभी ठीक है ओके ठीक है अच्छा प्राइमरी हाइपर पैराथर्डिज्म जो है उसकी बात हम हमारी चल रही है तो यूजुअली दीस पेशेंट्स हैव अ टिपिकल प्रेजेंटेशन दे हैव गॉट बोन्स दे हैव गॉट प्रॉब्लम विद द बोन्स दे हैव दे डेवलप स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग स्टोन्स एंड देयर इज एब्डोमिनल पेन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड बोन स्टोन्स एंड ग्रोन्स ग्रोन्स फॉर एब्डोमिनल पेन एंड देयर आर साइकियाट्रिक इश्यूज एज वेल बिकॉज़ ऑफ ऑल दीस क्रॉनिक प्रॉब्लम्स बोन्स में क्या होता है बोन्स के अंदर दर्द होता है और उसके इजी फ्रैक्चर्स होना शुरू हो जाते हैं नहीं बिकॉज़ द कैल्शियम कंसंट्रेशन इन द बोन इज डिक्रीज्ड स्टोन्स बनना शुरू हो जाते हैं रीनल कैलकुलाए बनना शुरू हो जाते हैं एब्डोमिनल ग्रोन्स इसलिए होते हैं बिकॉज़ दीस पेशेंट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंक्रीज कैल्शियम इज अ इज अ इज अ फैक्टर व्हिच कैन कॉज पेनकिटाइटिस एंड उसके अलावा जो है इट कैन कॉज हाइपरसिक्रीशन ऑफ गैस्ट्रिक एसिड एंड उसकी वजह से एब्डोमिनल पेन्स भी होते हैं इनको एंड दीस आर प्रीटी मिजरेबल पेशेंट्स एंड when you see them you they they got typical patients with 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 frontal bossing and uh, squarish thin ke features hote hain and all that so the presentation is bones the stones and bones kafi uh, dafa it is an incidental finding as a work of for hypercalcemia but if patient has hypercalcemia in the absence of any other secondary disease so uh, most likely adenoma is the cause may uh, as i said it may present as pancreatitis okay uh, now biochemically aapko kaise pata chalega there is a raised calcium level inappropriately uh, raised pth and often a low serum phosphate to the due to renal phosphate wasting now the pth we are talking about is like normally jo hai it is less than 5 or less than 10 or something like that lekin agar aapko parathyroid adenoma agar maujood hai ya hyperparathyroidism agar ho raha hai to the level can go up more than 500 into 1000 and and you know so on okay so how do we get to the diagnosis uh, of primary hyperparathyroidism okay obviously in blood investigations we have the calcium levels Uh, we have the parathyroid hormone levels which can be done uh, we can do a neck ultrasound to see if there is a uh, adenoma or there is a uh, enlargement in the, of the parathyroid glands and there is a very specific radionuclide scan which is called a sestamy b scan now this or in isko hum kabhi kabhi mebi scan bhi kehte hain now in the the good thing about the mebb scan is that if there is a hyper functioning parathyroid gland in the neck then uh, this mebb scan is going it shows us the location of that gland that where that gland is located and if it is hyperactive or not this is a very helpful study to do there are other things like dexa scan for, for to see the dense bone density and you, you know um, vitamin d level can be done as well now for primary hyperparathyroidism the main treatment is surgery uh, all symptomatic patients and asymptomatic as well in at times should be offered surgery it is it is similar to thyroid surgery and uh, you remove the parathyroid adenoma and the patient starts getting better almost immediately now as we discussed earlier the parathyroid gland is located behind the thyroid gland now that is also the area where the recurrent laryngeal nerve is running now parathyroid glands have quite an intimate relation with the you know with the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the incidence of damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve by by excising a parathyroid adenoma is higher is basically because it is very closely related to the nerve 
so the patient has to be counseled about it. That's that's point. Now, uh, symptomatic ko to aap operate karenge hi. Uh, now, if the patient is asymptomatic, so then what you are going to do is if the serum calcium is above one milligram per deciliter, if the creatinine clearance has is being affected, if the T score in the in the in the DEXA scan is less than minus two point five at lumbar spine, age is less than fifty years because then uh, life expectancy would be affected. And pain medical monitoring is not possible. Like patients who have interior uh, area se aate hai, ya Balochistan ke kisi remote area se aate hai, ya Afghanistan se kahin se aare hai, ya kisi aur mulk se aare hai. So un, unka ham, uh, agar symptomatic nahi bhi hote, sirf chemically agar pata chal raha hota hai ki haan ji elevated hai, to we operate upon. Now, hypercalcemia itself is, is a medical emergency. Theek hai? Uh, patient with jo aapke paas hyperparathyroidism ke saath aayega uske calcium levels elevated honge uh, and of course those elevated calcium levels other than affecting uh, bone resorption and uh, you know uh, uh, the increased parathyroid hormone uh, causing bone resorption the, the increased calcium itself can cause pancreatitis it can cause uh, uh, renal stones it can it can cause cardiac arrhythmias, which can be very, very uh, difficult to control. So, uh, it is important to control the hypercalcemia before we proceed for surgery. Now, there are three categories in which hypercalcemia can be classified. It is mild, moderate and severe. Now, the basic thing that you have to remember in uh, treatment of hypercalcemia is hydration you need to hydrate the patient well that is the main component in any kind of hypercalcemia the rest of the agents are added as the severity increases okay so in mild hypercalcemia uh, there's no actual medical management there's increased water intake it is you avoid drugs like thiazides lithium which are nephrotoxic uh, you avoid a high calcium diet, uh, you avoid volume depletion, obviously, uh, you don't let the patient get dehydrated and you encourage activity. Okay. Uh, moderate uh, hypercalcemia can be asymptomatic or symptomatic. If it is asymptomatic, you continue as with mild hypercalcemia, but if it is symptomatic, then you start the patient on IV hydration, high IV hydration. As you see, it is intravenous normal sign, which is 300 cc per hour. So normally, we don't go 120 cc per hour se upar nahi jate hai in a fit patient. But in these patients, we need to overhydrate these patients to mitigate the effects of increased calcium. And uh, other than that, there are agents which uh, decrease the calcium levels like bisphosphonates, alandronate, and pamidronate. Now, in patients with severe hypercalcemia, hyper, uh, we do the same. We have IV normal saline. Now, in IV normal saline and bisphosphonates are the same. Now, in addition to that, we can use calcitonin. Now, calcitonin is the opposite of paranoid. Okay? Uh, parathyroid increases calcium level, calcitonin decreases it. It's a it's a uh, natural hormone made by medullary cells of the thyroid. Uh, we can have porosamide, which is actually uh, makes the excretion of calcium through kidneys more efficient. So this is how you how you would treat severe hypercalcemia. Now if now, if there is recurrent hypercalcemia, uh, which is, you know, uh, uh, refractory to the medical management, then, you know, you go for parathyroidectomy, then you have different agents. So you, have, you can do hemodialysis even in very uh, difficult cases. Okay. Now, there are some special instances in which... Uh, Hyperparathyroidism is induced by uh, any other agents or anything like that. 
Now, uh, patients with lithium, as we all know, they're used in psychiatric patients. Uh, 10 to 15 per percent of patients who are treated with long-term lithium uh, have a mild elevation in calcium because uh, there's failure to suppress the PTH. Now, underlying pathology might be gland hyperplasia or a single adenoma. Uh, but when lithium is discontinued, the problem is solved. Now, uh, usually, this can the surgery up avoid them because lithium ban karne se se sahi ho jati hai. So it is important to have a good history and and you know uh, identify the the cause before you actually start off to going to a surgical solution for it. Now there are different familial syndromes which are associated with primary hyperparathyroidism. This can the subse common apne jo naam suna hoga wo men one or men two ke andar hota multiple endocrine neoplasia jis ke andar aapka thyroid parathyroid pancreas or ye cheeze affected hoti hain uh, there is familial isolated hyperparathyroidism there is hypoparathyroid hyperparathyroid jaw tumor syndrome very rare uh, there is familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia iske andar parathyroid hormone to suppress jaate hain lekin uh, because the kidney is not excreting calcium, that is why uh, the patient gets hypercalcemia. Now, secondary hyperparathyroidism. Now, secondary hyperparathyroidism, as the name indicates, is not an actual disease of the thyroid. <clears throat> so, this is what happens. chronic renal failure wale, uh, patients. Hote hai, hai? Uh, these patients start losing calcium from their kidneys because of renal failure because they they cannot they cannot conserve calcium actively through the kidney and vitamin d ki bhi deficiency inko ho rhi hoti hai to absorption bhi kharab ho jati hai calcium ki so what happens is that these patients start having a low calcium level chronically aur jo low calcium level chronically hota hai usse fark ye padta hai ki the parathyroid hormone secretion from the hypothalamus, it starts increasing. Now, uh, the uh, parathyroid hormone releasing protein from the from the hypothalamus starts increasing, which causes an increase in secretion of uh, parathyroid hormone. And the parathyroid hormone ke wohi sare uh, effects hote hain jo ke hyperparathyroidism ke andar hote hain. Jo primary jo primary hyperparathyroidism ke andar hote hain wohi effects iske andar hote hain. Jo fark hai wo ye hai ke iske andar not one gland is affected. All four glands are affected. Because this can there kisi a gland ki bhi mari nahi hai. The parathyroid hormone is uh, secreted by all of them because the stimulus is given to all of these glands. Ye autonomous nahi hota. It is in response to the low calcium in the body. Now usually this management jo hai, wo medical hoti hai. Aur agar <coughs> ye, uh, कुछ स्पेसिफिक क्राइटेरिया है जिससे अगर ये मीट करता है तो फिर हम इसको ऑपरेट करके इसकी टोटल पैराथायरोइडेक्टोमी करते हैं दैट मींस वी टेक आउट आइदर ऑल ऑफ द ग्लैंड्स और वी डू अ सब टोटल पैराथायरोइडेक्टोमी जिसके अंदर हम एक ग्लैंड का थोड़ा सा पार्ट छोड़ देते हैं ताकि कुछ ना कुछ प्रोडक्शन जो है वो होती रहे लेकिन दैट अगेन उसके अंदर रिकरेंस के चांसेस काफी होते हैं these are the indications for surgical intervention in uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism. Persistently high serum levels of intact PTH more than 500. Okay, hyperphosphatemia because uh, phosphate, uh, phosphate jo hai wo excrete nahi karti hai kidney, wo retain karti hai, calcium lose karti hai. Estimated volume of the largest gland is uh, more than 300 to 500 millimeter cube or long axis of more than one centimeter. And if the patient has one of these symptoms, then parathyroidectomy is usually recommended. Uh, osteitis fibrosa with high bone turnover, bone and joint pain, arthralgia, muscle weakness, irritability, uh, ectopic calcification, calciphylaxis, uh, progressive reduction in bone mineral content, uh, anemia resistant to erythropoietin stimulating agent, and uh, any cardiac symptoms that can accompany it. Now, 
now we come down to tertiary hyperparathyroidism so sec i hope that secondary hyperparathyroidism is cleared out uh, we have a primary hyperparathyroidism jiske andar disease kisi ek gland ke andar hoti hai uske andar adenoma ban jata hai which is autonomous and it secretes without uh, being regulated by anything now we have secondary hyperparathyroidism jo ke renal failure ke patients ke andar hota hai because ये लोग कैल्शियम लूज कर रहे होते हैं किडनी से ब्लड में कैल्शियम कम हो जाती है वो कम कैल्शियम स्टिमुलेट करती है पैराथायरॉयड ग्लैंड्स को टू सिक्रीट पैराथायरॉयड हार्मोन और ये कर, ये चारों ग्लैंड एक साथ सिक्रीट करते हैं सेकेंडरी हाइपर पैराथायरॉयडिज्म के अंदर चारों ग्लैंड साइज में बढ़ जाते हैं एंड बिकम हाइपर प्लास्टिक तो वी हैव पैराथायरॉयड हाइपरप्लेजी ऑफ ऑल द फोर ग्लैंड नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इन tertiary hyperparathyroidism is this is actually a continuation of secondary hyperparathyroidism hota ye hai ki charo gland agar bahut arse tak hyper function karna shuru kare to there is a chance ki usme se koi ek gland aisa ho jo ke automatically function karna shuru kar de aur apne andar koi adenoma bana le so that is a tertiary hyperparathyroidism so tertiary hyperparathyroidism is seen after long term secondary hyperparathyroidism due to hyperplasia of the parathyroid gland it results in raised calcium and very raised pth it occurs in anthracnal failure obviously it is a continuation of secondary hyperparathyroidism this this is what it is now uh, diagnosis jo hai iski wo uh, there is elevated total of ionized calcium with an associated elevated or unsuppressed pth uh, and a reduced phosphate occurring at least one year post transplant post renal transplant <coughs> treatment of choice is obviously surgical removal of 3 and a half parathyroid gland jo sub total parathyroidectomy ki humne baat ki thi uske andar थ्री एंड हाफ निकालते हैं एक ग्लैंड का थोड़ा सा पीस छोड़ देते हैं ताकि आप उसको थोड़ा बहुत जो है पैराथायरॉयड मिलता रहे बट देन अगेन ये दिस डिसीजन डिपेंड्स अपॉन के पेशेंट की लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी कितनी है एज कितनी है उसके हिसाब से आप डिसाइड करते हैं बिकॉज यू माइट नीड टू गो बैक इन एंड टेक दिस लिटिल ग्लैंड आउट वंस इट स्टार्ट हाइपर सिक्रेटिंग ओके सो इन समरी वी हैव प्राइमरी हाइपर parathyroidism secondary hyperparathyroidism tertiary hyperparathyroidism 